Blessings. Welcome forward to Reasonings Right Here, The Tree of Life. I'm your host, the Great Owl. It is a pleasure indeed to be here in this moment once again to share some thoughts, some offering on the experience of life and what's been happening. We do give thanks for the beauty of the current state that we are developing through our most difficult times. It's good when humans can persevere to find a way beyond these great, big, traumatic collective experiences and I'm giving thanks to the people who are learning to become dynamic in how we help each other, how we address these things in the individual and also in our immediate space and environment. Times are changing and the human perception, personality, persona is also changing, growing with the new experience and is finding that balance and we do give thanks. My current offering at the moment will be on being stillness. Being stillness. A lot of individuals always ask of seers, thinkers, influential individuals, people who have experienced great um, trauma and overcome and become somewhat of, you know, mentors, um, people to be um learned from people to be um inspired from people ask of these individuals they ask of people who like myself have been through these deep traumatic experiences and have somehow kept a normalcy let's use that word of experience right as well as i um, improving behaviors so these things are contextual in the essence that all these things are a part of the process of what people say you have an inspiring thought and some might say you are an inspiration. So, so many people ask of individuals such as myself, how can I truly be happy? How can I truly be myself? And so, this offering, being stillness, addresses all those things in a compendium and puts it into a congealed electromagnetic, biological, psychological experience. First of all, most individuals who desire to be happy have been taught a particular way of the expression of happiness or how it is to look in the visual spectrum of happiness. The expectancy of happiness is based on an ideal that the best types of behaviors would be engendered in the essence of what truly being happy is all about. There is a sense of Happiness looks like something. It looks like smiling all the time. It looks like great teeth. It looks like being well dressed. Happiness looks like good company, great friends, um, great relationships. That is how happiness is taught to us. So the individual being trained on this in the social environment, in the communal environment, being programmed in this manner, has their own individuation of this greater image and experience or expression of what happiness truly is. So they begin to construct from the thought forms they hold and let's say a micro of the macro idea, an individuation of the, the collective, the, 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 the sculpting of this form of desirability now becomes the miniature yeah so the maximus right and so this miniaturization and individualization and individuation becomes the template of happiness individuals should be this way experiences should be this and as such the entire life spectrum is designed that way where individuals are just naturally trying to have their little piece of the bigger pie, the bigger image, the bigger version. And so, when people do not satisfy the requirement, then they are not worthy. And that is not just of the other, that is also of the self. So when the self do not satisfy these things, the individuation, the individualized self, then begins to say, I am not deservant of happiness. I'm not deservant of love because I have 
failed in these requirements. So now that we've looked at a micro of the macrocosm of the distortion of the truth of happiness versus the idea of happiness. Now, I've just described a lot of the ideas of happiness. Individuals really hurt themselves over time, confuses themselves, confuses others in the pursuit of satisfying these bucket lists of idealisms that are not actual and are not rooted in experience they have. Experiences that would create the framework, the whole mechanism, the whole process of happiness. Because happiness is not just as a result of feeling joyful or doing the things which is said to bring joy and happiness. It is an authentic process. And now we go to the truth of happiness. The truth is, the source who made us, hallelujah, made us whole. Now I know there are many philosophies and people will say that we are an unconstructed, uncongealed psychological mass that has to be designed through experience. There are many versions. Some already acknowledge that we are complete and replete with the design mechanisms of fulfillment. Our divine has already written into the code of our experience all possibilities, all actualities of happiness. Say These things are not just a search for things. These things are the accepted things, the accepted ways of being, the acceptance of self. Self-acceptance is very essential in true happiness. Because first of all, all of the things that we wish to be, the, the, the perfect looking person, the most physically attractive, the most intelligent, the most charismatic, all those things are just a form, a form, an idea, a possibility. And these possibilities, though they look so beautiful and attractive, most times they will never fulfill because it's just like going out and buying a car and feeling that because somebody advertised this car and said it was going to be the, the next greatest thing. You thought by literally buying it, you are buying the next greatest thing upon recognizing that there is a process to this. Maybe five days, maybe two weeks, maybe a month you were happy. And then the reality of the cost to upkeep your new car, the cost to maintain it begins to come into your mind. The realization of its functionality now begins to become apparent in your life. And you begin to understand that, wow, I can't use this car to work. I can't use this car to, to be in a certain circle because this is just like for fun, for sport, or just for a whim, or for my own fancy. You, you, begin, you begin then to recognize that things are processes. See them in the true ontological experience of happiness. The true self has to be accepted. God wrote that into our code. We are beautiful and brilliant beyond our imaginations, way beyond our imaginings. But individuals are always looking at these forms that are minor expressions because the deepest expression is just in the silence. It's in the hey, hey. It's in the stillness. And this stillness is the core of true being, of true happiness. And we're going to explain this stillness a whole lot more. When we tend to break out of what is expected of us, what we expect of ourselves, what we expect of others, we then begin to see the greater experience as just being. When we then begin to recognize where we are in our experience and that we have missed out on so much because we were literally not present, then we recognize there's something about being in the present moment. And when you're in the present moment, the thoughts that rage is calm and still and do not dominate because the thoughts now become the vehicle that takes you to all dimensions in all different time and space in this time-space continuum. However, stillness, without these thoughts, roots you in the presence, gets you close in the experience enough to appreciate you were the one that got up and said this. You were the one that got up and did that. So if you recognize those things led to something negative, then you can get up and also, hallelujah, do something positive. So the power of all that is wonderful and actual is not outside, it's inside. So then you begin to look at your processes. How are you as a person? What are you truly about in this life? What are your passions that leads to the compassions of life? What are those things that you feel most deeply in your innermost self that cannot be removed by 
the amount of people in the environment, or how beautiful it seems, or how sorrowful it seems, those things cannot be removed based upon the form's experience and expression it takes. Those things are removable. If you can discover by just being still in the presence of yourself, without trying to prove to someone who you are, without trying to prove to someone that you fit on the standard bearer list of attractive and that you belong, you know within your being by observation of the awesome process that is your life. And from these divine knowings that is personal, you begin to see the experience become animated before you and your desires become active as experiences. And yea now, happiness ensues because it's not an outside in, but it's an inside out, hallelujah, process by which now you are harmonized in the actual process of being, being happy with self, being happy with the choices you've made, even the negative ones, because you now know you have the ability to correct them. Not setting yourself on a beauty standard that is promoted like the advertisement for the car being the next greatest thing. And so you see that body form, that sense of aesthetic as being your next greatest thing, removing yourself from your awesome place of being, and so in these moments now, people always seek so much approval because they got this idea, just like, you know, the, the idea of, of happiness, the idea of love. They got this design thing and they're fulfilling it by ticking off this bucket list. So what we're doing is just conforming ourselves into these preset modes. Then we say, oh, it's uncomfortable because that's not all of you. Because what you're doing is buying into the advertisement. You're buying into a formulation by someone else who a lot of times has been dissatisfied with their experience, that's why they're promoting this. True satisfaction with self now is a, is a sense of peace, stillness, a wholeness, without needing to prove to another. You don't need every moment of your life to explain to your friends, to those who you think are important, what are your next steps in life. Why do you feel it necessary? Because we're all ticking off this collective bucket list of what happiness ought to be. And in such doing, we are all seeking energy from each other and not, hallelujah, recognizing we ought to seek energy from the source of energy. Access point, i.e. self, sorry, inside self. In the experience of self is where all these things become activated and then manifest as the experience. So when you're trying to fit it from the outside in, all you're doing is trying to cram something into a space that it wasn't designed for. Because that space is a space infinitely smaller than this external space, but yet giving more volume, more depth to all things in the manifest space. That the manifest space couldn't fit within it in the manner we see it. It is it that fits into the manifest space awesomely because it is the spirit, the essence of being. And when you are happy with being who you are, you vibrate, you, you vibrate differently. You vibrate at a different level of frequency, resulting in different experiences, harmonized experiences. Ah, alas, stillness of being. This is very important in what true happiness is about because we keep trying to fix it in the behaviors of others and in the behaviors of ourselves, not recognizing that all those dysfunctionality came from the dissatisfaction with the self. It came from hey, self-hatred and the lack of self-knowing. Knowing thyself is the absolute deepest maxim one can take on in one's spiritual, religious, and divine life. Hallelujah. Knowing yourself will give you access to true happiness, to truly being happy in the experience that the divine has gifted you with, has gifted us with. And then you begin to actually see the awesomeness of your true friends, your true loved ones, and the true caregivers in this plane of experience, then you won't be so caught up in all of the wrong alignment, the wrong attachments, and the wrong, hallelujah, um, constructions of what you think is love and harmony. When love is and happiness is, it is. It is you. It is I. It is all of us before we decided how it should appear. It is first cause, not effect. So when you search effects for the essence and the fulfillment, all you'll find is married 
myriad versions of being, of forms, of expressions. But when you go to the source of it, the very essence of being, in that stillness, you notice all forms. All things arise in the good and the bad, and all things disappear and reappear in the good and the bad. No good things last forever. No bad thing lasts forever. All things in the temporal, all things in the incorporeal and the corporeal has their fluctuations and their in and outer flow. And these flows in the circadian, in our energy operates on this planet, gives us access to absolute happiness in being. In this being of stillness, of absolute awareness, without seeking, without contrivance, without seeking to be accepted by the environment, because we are the environment, hallelujah. Hence, we are accepted. We belong. We must know these things. And if you know that you belong, and that you are love, that you are happiness, that you are truth, then truth become it. Happiness become it. This essence of what the natural and uncontrived is becomes realized. It becomes experienced. Not just expressed. Notice what I said? It becomes experienced not just expressed, because expression is not the only form of experience. And so the expressions, the forms, the formulations of the idea of affection and loving behaviors dominate the experience of what true love is, true happiness is, when it is the self, when it is the source within us that has given us this gift of sound mind and body to experience and express the divergence of experience or expression and yet be at peace to channel and to challenge the self in all of its myriad expressions. Get peace with yourself. Come to harmonization with your source in self and be in the stillness. Be stillness. Flow without a need to please another, without a need to express to another where you are, to explain all the divergence of your life experiences, to give value to your conversation and to give meaning and purpose to your reasoning, or to give them the understanding that, you know, I am this way because of that. Fixing yourself along these modes. And people, when they evolve, they don't always evolve you, hallelujah, with them. So they leave you in these modes and these boxes that you've created from your self-expression, right? And then we, we blame others and we say this and we say that. But we are projecting our sense of self and our desire for well-being onto others and think others can fulfill these projections and projections cannot have energy the further it goes away from the self because the self is the source. So the essence of attraction, which is being, being on the same wavelength, on the same frequency as that which is harmonious, will always, hallelujah, manifest harmonious things. Even the discordant things will manifest in a manner that is still yet harmonious that they can be removed without great, hallelujah, disturbance of the flow of your energy frequency, sequences, and patterns. Being still, brothers and sisters, is the essence of true happiness. Being still, experiencing the self as a source of being, Yeshua Mashiach Yahuwah, the divine light in you, as your being, as your nature, as your experiences. And then, alas, the experience of hallelujah, happiness, become it. You, I, I and I, us, all of you, we are harmonizing the truth of divine being. Continue to be in the stillness. Be stillness. Harmonize the access point in self to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Eternal peace, joy, prosperity, divine well-being. This has been the great owl right here, reasonings of the tree of life, reminding you to be stillness in the awesome magnificence the process of completion, patience, having its true work to fulfillment, absolute or inspired, inspiring state of being. Being.